unbelievably sunny day in London. I made my way across Hyde Park, jumped on the DLR and headed over to see Pascal Glanville at his studio. Thank you for having me here. Good to meet you. And uh, thanks for having us in your studio here. It uh, looks like you've got bits and pieces from all, all parts. Got a few things going on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're here to chat about the Chapman stick today, but straight away I can see that there's a, it seems to be the thickest string is right in the middle. Yep. Uh, why don't you walk us through how it's, how it's tuned and, and how you approach playing it? Okay, so we've got this, this one, there's, uh, this is a 12 string model mm -hmm. called a Grand. So you've got six bass strings, but backwards, Okay. but tuned in fifths. So do, can we have a listen to how that sounds? Great. And uh, the logic with the middle string being in backwards is that you can play a bass note and a chord on top. I see. Uh -huh. So if you're thinking this part of the instrument, it's uh, it's uh, the reverse of how you would play it on a on a bass, where we've got the lower string kind of closest to you. You've yeah. got the lower string in the middle. And because the strings are because the tuning is a lot wider, mm. you can actually play quite a wide chords. Chords. Right. Amazing. And then you've got the top end, which is tuned in fourths. Uh huh. Uh, similar to a guitar, but it's dead, dead straight force. So it's sound. Right. Um, some people play it uncrossed, but I can do it across. So. Mm -hmm. The logic of the string placement uh, works really well, but obviously, uh, you know, it takes some time to learn coming from either a guitar or a bass perspective. Very much so. I notice yeah. a lot of bass players go to the the, the stick, uh, yeah. but uh, do you say you approach it from a guitar sort of perspective? Uh, I think it was both, but really, I, it was more more guitar than bass. I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've done bass gigs solely on this as well. Right. But I just see it as a whole instrument instead of just using sort of people just like just as a bass thing and, and a few things on top. I mm. just see it as a whole, almost like an arpeggio instead of playing an arpeggio in one with one hand. Mm. So each hand is tied together. Mm. Right, so that's one part. you use it as a solo instrument. Um, you, you said people use it in, in groups as well? Yeah, it's kind of, you use it in a, as a group context. Uh, solo is really interesting as well, because you can Im improvise a, a lot easier than guitar, let's say. You can have hold down something and just mm. kind of go off on either, either side. Um, and as well, it's actually a stereo instrument. Right. Uh, so each side goes to a different set of effects or amp. Right. Uh -huh. So you can literally go through a bass amp and for then you. go through a guitar amp and, and again that gives you that have wire or delay on, on the top mm. half. On here mm. I've just got it a fairly fairly clean sound but mm. uh, yeah you could have different effects on this side, these six strings, than the bass half. Right yeah and of course uh, it's kind of got that guitar bass heritage where you know you've got I guess it's guitar and bass strings on the on the stick. Uh, there, well, there, there are certain uh, the specialised strings, really. Okay. Because the scale length is a bass length, so guitar strings wouldn't reach the top. Oh, of course. Right. And they're different kind of, uh, because of the technique, you need different kind of strings, really, to get the right sound. So the action is a lot, uh, is it higher or lower than most? Lower. It's you want it to get it as low as possible, so you have the least amount of... Uh, space between and you can just play like 
if it was high, it would just mean you have to rework really? hard, and it's not as re responsive. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, I, I guess in this in this uh, circumstance, you don't want as much uh, like uh, friction. You don't want any tension mm. when you're when you're playing. You want to actually have it like a, a touch uh, instrument. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, great. Yeah, it's quite touch sensitive, very, very much so. Mm. And so, how did you get into it uh, originally? Oh, God, back in the day, you used to be able to buy them in in London, in uh, I believe Rose Morris, uh -huh. and uh, I just saw one in a window. I heard about the instrument but on on records and stuff, and never really saw one. Mm. And then there was one in a, in, a, in, a, in a window, and I was like, "Blind, what's that?" <laughs> and there's a video of uh, the inventor Emmett. Chapman, who was just playing some pieces on it, and I was like, wow, that's kind of pretty crazy. Yeah. I wanted to know a bit more about Emmett Chapman, the inventor of the Chapman stick. It's not often that an instrument bears the name of its sole inventor. It's kind of like late 60s, I believe, that he kind of started to come up with the idea originally from a guitar and added extra strings to a guitar. I think it was nine string guitar at the time and then and developed this technique and then uh, he started making them from his shed I believe from the early 70s. Mm. Yeah. And so you're saying that you, you saw him in shop windows uh, uh, but now it, it has it sort of waned in popularity a bit because you, they're, they are quite a, a, a special instrument and it's a, <laughs> you see, well I don't know, you, you see, I see a few of them uh, out and about but you're saying that they were a bit more popular I think earlier because days? It, it, cause it's a challenge to play, you need to actually really dedicate yourself to learning your way around it, certainly. Right. Uh, but they're all still handmade, uh, order you have to order them, so it's not like you know you just walk into a shop and they're there. Mm. So I think you need to be interested in you know put the investment in to, to buy one. So right. and they're only come from America, so there's quite there's a bit of a wait waiting list really to oh. get one. So it's not like a guitar where you can just pick one up in any shop. And so you do you play this uh, mainly solo yourself? I uh, do solo stuff. I work with bands as well. I've worked with different bands over the years doing bass stuff or. Whatever's needed, really. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And so, do you do you get uh, called up to be to be the the Chapman stick uh, specialist if someone wants that sound, or is it is it just that we want you on a project? How, how does it sort of work? Uh, yeah, you know, some some people know about the stick and they just want that sound, and I just get right. We want you to play on this tune, or do do gigs, or mm. do theatre stuff. I've done theatre stuff before, and yeah. I asked Pascal if he'd be kind enough to play one of his original pieces, written especially for the Chapman stick. So uh, this is one of my uh, compositions I'm working on. So it's the uh, first time I've played it with, with this arrangement, mm. and it's called Vampires.
Thanks for watching. Click on the links for more interviews, follow us on Facebook, or subscribe.